Welcome to Amy's Archives. This is the best of the best. This is my very best content, the content that has helped thousands of women just like you. So go in, enjoy, and if you want access to the full video in its original format, see the description below for the link. Dive in and enjoy, and please leave comments so I know how to better support you. All right. Hi. So I, I told everybody that we're going to be talking about egg quality, whether or not we can actually improve it, and how, I guess, you know, it, it's linked to epigenetics, if you will. But um, I think, obviously, epigenetics and egg quality are closely linked, but let's hear your your take on it or typically like if a woman comes in and says to you can I really improve my egg quality like I keep getting you know, like I'm not making it to blastocyst or maybe I, sure. I'm not getting any PGS normals um or I keep yeah. having miscarriages and they're chromosomally abnormal what would you what would you tell her the answer is yes so now you know w with the egg or with anything in the body there is there is two things that is genetics which every we all know it's like a code you're born with and that's it and there is now something called epigenetics. And that's why I wanted to link both to talk about the air quality. Mm -hmm. The epigenetics, epi means above. And mm -hmm. epigenetics is above genetics. It's actually what controls the genes inside mm -hmm. the DNA. So I can have my fingers. If this is my code, that's great. I can put a ring, put a ring here. That's, that's, that's epigenetics. I'm yeah. changing. Even though I have the same fingers, I'm changing how they look. You're changing the expression, the, right? The, exactly. Yeah, whether or not it, it, the phenotypic expression is what we say in the scientific world, but to all of you, it's whether or not like that disease is going to manifest or whether or not you're going to age before your time or maybe even delay the aging process, could we say? That's, yeah. that's right. So, so back to the egg quality, the egg yeah. maturation and, and egg quality, there is two parts for the egg. There is the nucleus, like the egg yeah. that we eat, the yolk and the white. Yeah. There is two parts of the maturation, the nucleus, which is the yolk, and the white, right? Both of them have to be good in order for the yeah. egg to have good quality. Now, the inside, which is the nucleus, that has the DNA, great. Right. But the outside that has mitochondria and other things, believe it or not, when a woman ages or has any problems, medical or whatever, the mitochondria get affected and mitochondria yep. function can affect directly the, the epigenetics oh, on yeah. inside the yolk. So this is when things like, uh, you know, acupuncture, acupuncture, all that could improve the, the, uh, the outside. The egg white, the, the mitochondrial white, function. Yeah. Exactly, in order to improve the, 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 the outcome. Now, step back about epigenetics, things that we have that affect our expression and why you and I are different are a lot of it, even if we're twins, we can have different things due to the epigenetics. There is, there is internal and external factors yeah. for any expression of a gene. Mm -hmm. And the internal we cannot change, but the external, right. such as smoking, lifestyle, uh, diet, polyutans, right. diet uh, obesity, uh, where you uh, live, like the chemicals you're exposed to at your workplace, right? So many, the bath and beauty products you use and the toxins you're exposed to 100%. So it's like nature versus nurture, really, you know, and the, the nurturing right. aspect, how you treat your body, how you live your life determines that epigenetic expression. Absolutely. And that's why even if you, if I, if I can, if I clone you right now, Amy, yeah. I'm not doing, I wish I can do that, by the way, but if I clone, <laughs> we can clone each other and then we can go to that beach we were talking about this morning. <laughs> if I clone you <laughs> and then I put one, one, let's say, um, in the United States and one Amy, let's say, uh, uh in India eating, yes. uh, you know, eating only Indian food, believe it or not, you both will have different health issues when you guys yeah. get older. Yeah, right. Maybe the Amy in America will have maybe more diabetes, hypertension. I'm just giving examples. Maybe the one there will have more cancer because she was yeah. predisposed to whatever. So what I'm trying to say is that, you know, the, the epigenetic and the environment is very important. And hence, and let me tell you why, we, you know, this conversation we started it, is I also get asked a lot, uh, women who want to use donor egg, they yeah. tell me, you know, again, I don't push patients for donor eggs ever because, you know, 
they have the right to use their own eggs. But when they start to think about donor egg and, you know, they get emotional, that's not my, my, my genes and my, not my DNA. Mm -hmm. I say I respectfully disagree. And I write on a piece I of totally paper, disagree. worried about yes. epigenetics. Because if I get egg from Amy and put it in someone who is, has medical problems, right? Let's say I put your egg, you're healthy, eat diet very well. I put your egg in someone who has, like, let's say, diabetes, hypertension, smoker, and all that stuff. That baby that's coming from that egg, because it's been exposed to that environment, and because of the epigenetics that change the, the DNA expression, will have different diseases or will, will be much worse than, than the same egg that grows inside your body. Having said that, you know, the environment inside the uterus does have an important role on the DNA expression. And if you we talked about the child's palace today, guys, I told him about the child's palace and how it's like the vessel. You still have to prepare the vessel. Even if you did donor egg, it doesn't solve all the problems in a sense, you know? Right, right, exactly. So that's why, you know, I think, you know, patients, again, who are thinking about potentially using donor egg, they should, you know, in my opinion, to read, read more about the epigenetic, it's not just only about the DNA no. and which egg is coming from. You're having your partner's sperm if you have a male partner. You're carrying that baby for nine months and, and you really are shaping- It becomes you. The, yeah, the, it really you're becomes shaping you. shaping that embryo tremendously. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk more about the, the yolk, if you will, the nucleus of the cell, because that's like the genetic material that's coming from mom and dad. So- and this is really even in my brain. So if that's like bad, if that's chromosomally abnormal, can that be altered by the whites being worked on? Does that mean, am I making sense? Or is that more like heritable diseases? Like if, if dad has like cerebral palsy or something like, is that what it's more like? So there is heritable diseases, like, yeah. like, like sickle cell disease. Yeah. Yeah. And there are Down syndrome, which right. are problems with the egg division. Now, gotcha. I want to yeah. explain this, and this is very important for whoever is watching. Your eggs right now, even if you're 60 years old, they are, have normal yolk. The, it's 46 chromosomes. Now, as the egg, you're 46 chromosomes, your husband is 46 chromosomes. Right. We need an embryo that is 46 chromosomes, correct? Now, mm -hmm. the ovaries and testicles are unique organ, and that's why they're called reproductive system, because they split the DNA into 223 chromosome, then 23 plus 23, they meet to make 46. a 46 chromosome. Yeah. Now, your eggs, even if you're 60 years old, have 46 chromosome when the follicle is small. Got you, okay. When the follicle starts to mature, when it reaches around 12 millimeters, mm -hmm. this is when the DNA, the, the white, Remember the yes. white and the, and the yolk? Plays a role. White is actually what's responsible into splitting the DNA equally. Now, if so it's like when older, people say all my eggs are bad. It's like, no, that's actually not possible. Your they're eggs all are not actually, bad. They're all actually good right now. Good. But all as your they eggs mature, are good. Correct. All the your DNA eggs are good. I love as that. They, as they mature, yes. the white, that's if it's not impacted. good, it doesn't yes. split the and now if it's splitting the DNA unequally, like cutting an apple, yeah. a piece is bigger than the other. Now you have 24 and 22 instead of 23, and 23. Right. 24 plus 23 sperm, they make it, they become 47, which is Down syndrome. And that's the problem with aging. Now, yeah. improving the white or changing the white, think about it this way. The future, the future yeah, will be changing any women, white. even right. exactly, changing the white, even in a 60 year old can have a baby with her own egg because Get a, get the white from someone much younger, 20 years old, you're 60 years old. Take oh, your this your, is that, the white. That, what is it called? Um, it's called mitochondrial replacement therapy. Mitochondrial replacement, right, 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 yeah. Or nuclear transfer. So you put it in a white of someone younger if you're 60 years old and the white that was coming from 20 year old, fuse them, then mature it in the yes. dab. Do in vitro maturation. Now the white is young, it's going, most likely it's gonna split it equally into 223 right. chromosomes. So that's what the future is going to be. That's but why. But then what, like, so what about ozone or PRP? Does that have exactly an impact on the white, do you think? Yeah. Absolutely. Why we give a human growth hormone? We give a human growth yes. hormone. There are a lot of protocols. They use HGH. Human yes. growth hormone affects the white. It has IGF. It turns into IGF-1. That's important for the white. It makes it yes. some, because we have less growth hormone as we get older. Remember, we don't want right. growth hormone because I don't want to grow anymore. 
as it goes down, I'm replacing it. So now the eggs are happier, the white is happy. And this is how the PRP works. By the way, we had a second first patient today. I know, Jessica told me. Yeah. Such a story. So good, so good. <laughs> this, did that PRP last month just by sex alone? I swear to God, I, I can't even. And tell now you, all anyway. forty-two, never been pregnant, right? Like Four, all forty-two uh, years and eight months. She yeah. came for us to do serine ultrasound and office hysteroscopy, but we're doing urine pregnancy test before the procedure. Thank God we did it, and like, oh my God, it's positive. We did the PRP March seventeenth. She she was like, no, no, you're joking. She's like, that's not mine. I'm like, it's yours. So we took blood, we ran it. It was 529, her ACG. Uh, it's such a good, oh. So two in, tw two, in two days. It's, it's yeah, after crazy. PRP. And these are both women that have been trying to conceive without success for years. And right? they didn't do IVF. They just had sex Yeah, they didn't do IVF. But so I always tell my patient, if you go to PubMed, P-U-B-M-E-D, which is all the medical journals in the world are published there. There's a search place and you put PRP and ovaries, you'll see all the recent articles. Yeah. So and PRP much. and uterus, you'll see. Now, the PRP does, it has a lot of growth factors. So it works mm -hmm. through three mechanisms. Imagine, first, before we start, imagine your ovary is a lake and the eggs are the fish. As women get older, as these fish are getting older, the fish are throwing the, you know, poop and whatever in the, in the water. It's getting dirty, toxins, whatever, wastes. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh-huh. So cellular now debris, water, yes. So now the cellular debris, thank you. Now <laughs> the, the, the fish are living in a water that becomes dirty and muddy and they're not happy, okay? So the eggs are not happy. Now, and imagine this lake has caviar, what do you call the egg fish at the bottom, okay? Now, we put PRP in this lake, it does three things. One, it stimulates the fish mechanically to, to move. Wow. Two, it precipitates some of this, some of this dirty uh, stuff in the water to, go. To, okay. make the, to make the water cleaner, if you want. And three, it turns the, the fish eggs into newer fish because ovaries have stem cells. And when you inject it, it turns stem cells into See, and that, that is eggs. like a whole other topic for another time, but like you do not run out of eggs. Ovaries have stem cells and there's research to support this. So this whole right. notion of like your eggs are all gone or they go away. Is, is not true and there's data to support this. So it's about like activating them and-, um, and But I this is like how the hair loss work thing, you know, the yeah. stem cells here, you inject it, the stem cells turn into hair follicles and that's yeah, how- Yes, so it's the same it's thing. Another... Correct. So I know we're, we're gonna try to wrap up in the next couple of minutes, but so like lifestyle, like things we can do now without mitochondrial replacement, if you will, to improve the white, improve that like outer area of the egg is, is obviously like diet, lifestyle, like the antioxidant supplements. Absolutely. Things like PRP, ozone, right. Absolutely. That all can definitely, look, if, if each one of them adds one to 2% to the quality yeah, yeah, of the right. I will take it. Um, I find it fascinating. And I was telling you this morning, that's kind of what Chinese medicine has been talking about for thousands of years. We call it postnatal essence. And it's like, you're born with what you're born with, but what you take in from the world, like your food and your thoughts and your lifestyle and your, you know, the toxins you're exposed to and your stress levels and your sleep and that impacts how you age, you know, so right. you can amplify that, you can degrade it, right? And so um, it's, it's a fine tune uh, machine, but this whole general statement that once you're 35, you fall off the fertile cliff and all your eggs no. are bad is, um, is bullshit. No, actually right? all your eggs are good. That's well, why different protocols, Amy, yields yes. different outcome. That's right. why we try different things. Why? Because the way you're maturing these follicles, especially right. the transition, when they reach 12 millimeter, yeah. that phase is extremely important. And that's why people say, oh, I did Lupron scan or this, or antagonist or clomid. That affect the white, does affect yes. the division. And too much shots, too much medication. Yes. I agree, it's totally on, affects quality. To yeah. harm the white and to more likely, the DNA will split unequally. That's yeah. why people ask me, how can the stimulation affect the genetics? Well, it does. Because, because you are harming the white, that's a device abnormally, thus you're more likely to get genetically abnormal embryos. So you know what I say? I think it's microwaving better. versus slow cooking. Like I like microwaving that. foods versus slow cooking. Like it's like you take your time, you're really like, oh, it's there such a good go. stock. You cook it down <laughs> versus zapping it in the microwave. That's you right. Know, it's two different outcomes.
Okay. I'll see bye. you later. Bye. bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. bye. bye.